We're at CSC Ranches here in Pilot Point, Texas, and we're doing a series of videos in conjunction with Hoof Watch and the WCB for Goshen, Connecticut, for the Goshen Stampede, where our judge will be Travis Smith. Today, we're doing the Vulcan Horseshoe Individual Class in Goshen, Connecticut, and one of the shoes we'll be making is a lateral breakover or side bone shoe made out of 12 and a half inches of 3 8 by 3 quarter. It measures five and an eighth square. It's got a hammer drawn toe clip. It's safed on the lateral side on the outside of the fuller end. It's a wedged medial heel. It's fullered for five slim blades. I got a nice tapering heat, kind of dwindles into nothing. I'm already gonna start establishing a kind of a, a wedge shape when I say that. It's not going to be perfectly square. I'm kind of angling. See now, my hammer will tip over and I'm angling at this side. Just trying to get everything straight in there. I made sure to, you have to forge enough to get rid of your crease. If you just narrow it up, you end up getting a crease. So you want to keep that flat. I've got plenty of material. Now I'm just going to go a third, a third, a third, and bump the toe. Third, we're just going to put a little bit of material into the toe. Get a nice little bit of width. Now we'll just crack the toe and make us a shoe. All right, we're just going to start trying to get a big hoop and then Start here and we're gonna just, I'm gonna, I'm not pinching, I'm just on the other side because I have lots of leverage and I'm gonna get it going down. Tighten up. And it, and it really doesn't need to be tightened up because it's already hooking in a little bit. So I'm gonna push down and tighten up right there. I'm not, I'm barely just dropping it down. Come in here and flatten it out. and then seat it out real good. Get your width. So now we'll do the, we'll do the lateral side of the shoe. All right, so I know approximately my toe clip is gonna be right here. So I'm gonna just start safing around the corner and just use that line and come all the way through. Then if you just hold it here, I'm pushing down to the corner the whole time. And you can see how it makes just a nice line. All I'm doing is staying behind the edge and I'm just kind of trying to hit with the edge of my hammer. Now, now I've got plenty of fudge factor. I'll clean up it, run it one more time and then line out my, my fuller in. I'm going to come up here and just kind of blend all my edges together. That makes a really nice straight line. So what I'll do is I'm going to just pick it up a little bit. When I say pick it up, I'm just going to run the edge up a little bit, fuller it. I want to keep it in the straight because you can keep your lines cleaner in the straight. Once you put it on the bend, you have to slow down so much because every over overlapping hammer blow makes it hard to make nice flow in a section. So the longer I can keep it in the straight, the better off I am.
just trying to get a nice line in there because it'll all tighten up when you fuller it, I mean when you bend it. When you make that branch bend, it'll tighten up and then you'll have a nice consistent line. I'll bend it. Bring it on around. Don't hit hammer on horn. Just all I'm doing right now is just kind of getting everything brought around that's nice and clean. I would not suggest pritchling it out at this point. You can see where my nail holes are, it got a nice shiny spot. I'm gonna flatten it up. But if you have to come in here and clean it up a little bit, you can move your nails in and out just by messing with the safing surface. And you could do that with plain stamped as well. Just best to hold off because I can still take my head stamp and come in at a more of an acute hit and make sure they don't go so coarse on me. All right, we're just gonna come in and forge a heel on there. Flatten it up and redo it again. I'm just trying to get most of my rasping work out of the way. That little part at the end is just to get that nice heel check on the inside. Now I'll mark my, my medial fuller and mark and we'll just carry on with it. I got it marked in there, I'll bring it around and we'll, we'll stamp this side. I'm gonna just hem it. Kinda get that inside check on there. A wedge shoe, you'd always punch a little tighter in the heel and go up towards the toe just because you have a wedge. So you're, you're definitely gonna fit that with just a little bit of length and width no matter what. Otherwise, you have a mess. Take your calipers. And now I know where my toe clip's gonna go. I guess pretty good because you can see my safing just comes up there. I'll work that safing in. That's why this side is kind of left undone is because all these lines have to meet up and go to your toe clip. Just flatten it out on the inside, gets all that cleaned up and looking the same. Come in here, soft edge, and just grab a little bit of that on both sides and now I'm set up.
Now we'll just rerun each branch. I'm going to go for my heel nail. I'm going to grab the safing edge and I'm just going to finish right on through to the toe clip. Now, I'll grab from the heel and bring it on around. Flatten it up. And then I'm just going to come in here and push in and just start safing off and create that nice line all the way around. Again, just kind of make all those things crisping up. At the widest part. Come on right through the toe. And finish it up. Right through the heel. And then just kind of Kick that out a little bit. And then I think we get this all sorted out and we'll file her up and be done. What I'll do is we'll just put in this, clean up these lines and maybe soften up that edge with a, a file and we'll be, we'll have that thing all done.